Hi, I'm going to build a mountain lion uh, Mark II. And the first uh, thing I do is I tape the plan down. I have my glue ready to go. I have my sticky dots ready, and I have a little stick to uh, put the glue on with. And I'm going to begin by building the uh, joints. I'm going to get the parts together pretty snugly, press a sticky dot down on it, and then uh, just kind of follow the dots in numerical order. And those, uh, if you look at the plan, there's a one and a two and a three, and those aren't you know, ultra critical, but it's just a good uh, reasonable order in which to do things. So on the stabilizer I've put together the uh, kind of the middle joints and now I'm just going to get the the tips again. You just kind of hold them together, put a sticky dot down, and you can press pretty pretty firmly down on the sticky dots. And uh, there, that one's ready to go. Set that aside. Actually that's four and five, isn't it? Okay, that one's ready to go. Okay, now we're ready for some glue. So the way I'm going to do this is uh, I flip the structure upside down. I'm going to take a piece of plastic and put it right here to protect the, you know, the table, whatever you're working on. Um, this will go very quickly. I'm going to start and putting a little blob of uh, what's well, tight bond, tight bond original right there, and that's you know that's enough for the entire plane. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little stick here and uh, put some on the joint, joint, and you don't have to worry about getting into the joint just yet. I'll show you how we do that. So I'm just kind of put one one little blob on every joint, and I'm actually using more than you more than you need. Then I kind of just smear it in, and you press right down into the joint. You want to smear this out as much as you can, and then actually force it down into the the crack. But you don't have to open up a gap to do that. Just your pressure on the joint uh, will take care of that for you. Okay, so that one's ready to go, and this, the thinner you can press it out, the uh, shorter it will take to dry. Set that right there, and uh, what can I set on? How about the bottle glue right there? And how about this little plastic deal? I'll set that right on top of there. You know, just hold everything nice and flat while it's Okay, I'm going to cover a uh, mountain lion wing here. You know, what I've done first is I've laid the parts out. Uh, it, really, it's all uh, on the same sheet of tissue. You can do this as a, uh, you know, cut out the pieces individually first if you want, but this works uh, just fine. And uh, I'm just sort of positioning them here on the sheet so that you can see, uh, so, you, you know, when you're building, you can see how they're going to go. One thing to watch out for, make sure that the two wings are uh, opposite each other so that, that you make sure you're covering the top uh, of each wing instead of the top of one and the bottom of the other. Put this aside for a minute while I get out my box and uh, I just have this this old box in which I in which I do my uh, glue spraying in and I'm just going to set the parts you know this is the kind of thing you can you could set them all three inside here like I do or if you're not quite certain what you're doing you could do it uh, one part at a time so just set them inside there if you have a preferred side, if you think one side is better than the other, uh, you know, for the uh, for the top, make sure it is uh, pointing upward. So I grab my grab my trusty uh, 3M77. This one's been around a while, and I'm going to just give the entire thing a very light uh, spritz. Doesn't have to be heavy at all. And a, a new user of this stuff will sometimes put way too much on you. I, I, I probably right there put on more than is needed. Now I'm just going to take the parts one after the other and I'm going to set them right down flat onto the onto the uh, tissue. If I were a better builder I probably would have made sure the tissue is, is um, even just a little bit flatter. This isn't bad though. So I'm just going to put it there. Uh, you do want to leave a gap in between them but it doesn't have to be uh, too big. You just need to be able to fit scissors uh, in the gap. So I'm just pressing all the way around on these parts so that uh, the glue you know, sticks to the sticks to the wood all the way around. Okay, so that's pretty pretty straightforward. Next thing, I'm going to grab a pair of scissors. I have two. I have uh, this one right here. I oops, dropped a pin. I have uh, this one. It's you know standard Fiskars uh, type sewing scissors. This one's been through the wars a little bit. I'm just going to cut the parts out uh, kind of roughly. They don't need to be trimmed just yet. I'm just going to separate them, set them aside. And uh, I, I have another pair of scissors, uh, which I really like, and it's a, it's a very long uh, pair of scissors. Here it is right here. It's this really nice long one that 
that uh, makes trimming one of these uh, extremely easy. But I'll do it with the short scissors so you can see that it can be done. I'm going to tackle the hardest cut uh, first. That would be this one right here, the long straight edge on the uh, on the horizontal stabilizer. Let me get those out of the way so you can maybe see what I'm doing. I'm going to cut this long edge right here and what I do is I have the part facing upwards so the descending blade of the scissors tracks right alongside uh, the wood and you get a very good cut doing this. Now when, it, when you get into this long cut it gets a little bit tricky so you want to tilt the stabilizer away from the scissors and that gives you a nice uh, exposed edge where you can get the blade all the way along. There, that's the hardest part of all the trimming. And, uh, you know, just clean the, keep the uh, scissors free of extra tissue. Now I'm just going to trim all the way around. This goes very quickly. And you don't have to spend all day doing this. Uh, this isn't the only way to trim covering. You can use the wet edge technique, which is uh, a good idea. Works fine. Maybe I'll do that on one of these others here. There, there's the stabilizer. I'm just going to go around and kind of press the covering down, make sure that it's all, you know, stuck all the way around. Good, it's not, it's not perfect, perfect, but uh, it'll certainly do the job. I'm just going to trim that one section a little bit cleaner right there. Okay, I'm going to trim this last one using my, using my big scissors, and you'll see how quickly this goes. It's like snip. One big long cut along here. You can see there I have a little bit of a, of a uh, dot stuck to the bottom of that glue joint. And then I can make this one long uh, cut almost in one snip. But there you go. Okay, there's the uh, covering. And this, this process works for covering a mountain lion or you can use it for covering any uh, plane. The idea of spraying and then laying the part um, upside down onto the covering that's been uh, spread flat on the table works, works like a champ. Here's the rudder. Here's the stabilizer, two wings. I guess that stabilizer will look a little better for it like that. Uh, over here I have the wing joiner. And uh, last I, I show my, my glue. Here's so um, I happen to be using a uh, little bit of super glue and uh, some accelerator I have handy. This, this super glue is not thin. It's actually kind of a medium. Uh, but you can get in these cheap little tubes if you want to use that. You could also be using tight bond, of course. Uh, that would be another good glue to use. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is I want to get the uh, get the hook onto the uh, fuselage. You see the hook has a kind of a, an extension here. That's just so you can grip it. I'll bring this closer to the camera. I think you can see that there's a little there's a little cross that you can see right through the oval. That's just so you can make sure it's in the right uh, place. So I'm going to take my glue and uh, with with super glue, something like this, or uh, cyanoacrylate. You can just put a drop of glue right there in the uh, middle of the dot. And my glue is working a second ago. There it goes. Oops, that's a little too much. Uh, I'm going to hit it with some accelerator just to speed the process along a bit. And uh, that's good. I can set that down. Next will be uh, to join the two wing panels together. So I take this joiner, and you'll see there's a little um, kind of an extension on the top. And that little tab kind of slips right into that slot in the wing, in the leading edge. Then you take the other wing and do exactly the uh, same thing. And if uh, those all line up, it sort of squeezes in there tight. And uh, that's, that'll be a nice joint when I put some glue on it. So here's the glue again. Uh, let's put a little glue right in there. Uh, you know, this is absolutely a case where you don't need too much glue. You know, this, this stuff is, is vastly stronger than the, uh, than the wood it's gluing. So you don't need a whole lot. Uh, you do need a little bit. If I can get to come out, there it goes. And uh, I'm going to hit that with a little accelerator too. Uh, don't worry if you get some accelerator on the on the tissue, it dries very quickly. Now I'm also going to bring my trailing edges together and put a little glue uh, right about in there. I think that'll work out just, that's, that's even too much. So I want to hit that with the accelerator. We're going to be gluing that to the top of the motor stick here next. So I'm going to take the motor stick and the motor stick, uh, you'll see there's a, there's a notch right in there. This has a little extra wood, I'll have to clean that up. But uh, you, you just slide the clip right down over the motor stick into its position right there. I think you can see that. And, uh, you know, that little hole, that little notch in the uh, wing slides over a tab right in there. Hit this with a little glue. A little drop in there, maybe drop back there, maybe a little back there. Hit it with some accelerator, speed it up. 
And that's, that part is done. You want to make sure that the wing is lying flush along the top of the, uh, of the motor stick and that you don't have uh, you know, any unusual gaps there. But that'll be, that'll be just fine. Next, I'm going to take the stabilizer and uh, position it over its tab right there at the, at the uh, trailing edge or at the back end of the, uh, of the uh, fuselage. Now, you know, I want to make sure when you, when you do this, I think you can see it on the camera, you want to make sure that the stabilizer and the wing are uh, lined up. Because of the way the laser cuts the wood, it's possible that the, uh, s that the edge of the motor stick has a bit of a, a tilt to it. Uh, there's no avoiding that, but you want, to, you want to line this up visually as best you can. So I have that uh, you know, parallel, it's, it's tough to call it parallel where the wing has a bend in it. But I have, uh, have that lined up pretty well. And here comes a little glue. I'm just going to put a little on to start with. Uh, I'm going to give that a little, give that a little bit of a accelerant. Okay, and that'll hold that in place while we uh, do a final adjustment on that. So I'm looking at this from the back one more time. Make sure it's lined up, and then put a little glue uh, down in here. You want to make sure that the leading and trailing edges, in particular, have a little bit of glue. A little accelerator. Make sure it's good. And that's done. Here comes the stabilizer. Uh, pardon me, the uh, the rudder, I guess it is, or vertical stabilizer. Slides right over there, and there's a there is a tab, um, a, kind of a downward extension of the motor stick, the fuselage, that enables you to grip it. That's all that's there for. So you can hold that nice and straight while you put a little glue, a little on top, will be good, and uh, a little bit along that edge. Make sure that there's some in there, and then. You're done with that. Okay, uh, what I want to do next is I want to take uh, a propeller and I want to balance it because if these, if the propeller is balanced, uh, you know the the plane will shake like a sewing machine and it doesn't fly uh, quite as smoothly as it would. And you see, there's a heavy blade right there, and it's that's the one that hangs down when you spin it. You don't have to spin it very fast to do this. Just watch it until the heavy blade. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of clear tape. I'm just going to tape it onto the other blade to make it just a little bit heavier. So here's my clear tape. Um, I do it, you know, it doesn't have to be clear, I suppose, but uh, that seems to be best. I'm going to, that's actually too much. I'm going to tear off a little piece, maybe about like that, and attach it to the back side of that heavy, uh, pardon me, of the lighter blade, mash it down uh, pretty well. And what, you, what you're looking for is for the propeller to come to stop in no particular preferred position. Now I, I just did it and I need a little bit more tape. That wasn't quite enough. So let's take, uh, there's that piece that I used a second ago. Maybe I can tear a little bit more uh, from it. Okay. Now traditionally um, people balancing plastic blades do so by uh, sanding or scraping the plastic uh, on the heavy blade until it's lighter. Now you're welcome to do that but I find that to be uh, a little bit time consuming and besides a little bit of extra nose weight will never harm uh, this plane. It's always easy to, to fix if that's the case. Okay, there's another piece of tape on uh, and uh, you know get a little bit closer each time. So I think that's okay. This goes on the front of course, make sure it hangs downward and that presses onto the nose of the plane. You want to get it uh, as far back into the slot as you can. Then comes the, the rubber and what I've done is I've I've made a loop that's long enough um, that it will hang just about to the uh, to the leading edge of the stabilizer. So I, I think I have that measured out. I can't remember what the number is, but that's that's the way it goes. Can you you can see that a little bit a little bit easier if I back away? Okay, so that hangs down all the way to about the leading edge of the stabilizer. And as you wind it up, of course, that will snug up and then it'll hang on the hook. That's it. The uh, plane's ready to go. The one last step that I would uh, you know, encourage you to do is to look at your plane very critically in terms of alignment, especially the wings. You want to make sure that no wing has uh, you know, too much incidence or uh, possibly bent downwards. And, and this is the time to be very, very critical uh, of your work and of your final assembly. So if it doesn't look at all uh, perfect, now's the time. You can just kind of you know, manhandle this into position. You can bend things. You can uh, maybe twist the leading edge as you need to, and uh, you can even go as far as cracking a spar. If you if you feel that the only way out of uh, your misalignment is to crack something and reset it with glue, well, that's a good idea. Okay, so I think this plane's ready to go, and um, 
I hope yours is too.